It's been great. Uh, obviously, transition uh, countries. I thought it would be a lot easier uh, coming from America, speaking the same language, all that. But uh, I found it uh, a little bit challenging, particularly driving on the other side of the road. People drive a little fast in England too, so just getting used to all that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, having a having a baby as well, so a lot of change at oh, once. Okay. But uh, sorry, hold on, I'll just wait till that. <laughs> Distracting me, so. Obviously, a lot of a lot of change at once, but you know, for me, the club has uh, gone above and beyond to make sure I'm settling in well, and and it's a really great locker room that I feel uh, like a part of already. Are you, are you sort of slightly worried? I mean, you're coming to Arsenal, and you're probably going to be the number two goalie, and you've got the World Cup coming up. Is that almost a gamble that you take? Uh, no, I mean, when opportunities like this arise for players from the United States, uh, they're few and far between. So I wouldn't say that I'm worried or it's a gamble. I think this is a, the obvious progression of my career, taking the next step. Uh, getting my foot in the door overseas is, is a lot easier said than done. Uh, I've been playing really well in MLS for the last three seasons, and this was really the first offer, concrete offer that I had. So um, it's good to get my foot in the door. And, you know, playing consistently in MLS did not guarantee me the starting role for the USMNT, even when other guys, um, you know, weren't playing. So I needed to shake it up um, and try to take my game to the next level. And playing in the Premier League with these guys day, day in and day out uh, has already shown me some massive improvements. Is it, is it more of a long-term decision, really, and not just with an eye on the world? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you have to think about your entire career. You know, you can't just make decisions based off of one moment. You know, injuries happen, things happen, and athletic careers are finite. So. Um, you know, I've always wanted to take this game as far as I can take it. So to be able to represent a club like Arsenal is is a dream come true. How did Mikel sell it to you? Did he say you come over and battle to be number one? Did he say you're signing as, as number two? How, how did he actually sell it? Yeah, more like more like the first one that you said. Um, I, you know, we're not in this business to to you know just accept being second. You know, we're, we all want to battle. We all want to play. We all want time on the pitch. So. Um, the mentality that he wants from me is to push Aaron, push myself, and push the guys in the locker room because I am a senior player in the locker room. Being 28 years old, there's a lot of young guys uh, bopping around. So being somebody that those guys can rely on for advice, you know, on the pitch as well as off the pitch. Matt, you became an Arsenal legend before you even flew over to London when you refused to sign the uh, Tottenham uh, kids shirt. Was that just an instant reflex for you? And uh, and and by the way, congratulations on doing that. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, thanks. Start. I guess. I mean, yeah. That that's just that's just all in the fun of it for me because I've seen that fan before, and he's worn Revs jerseys, and of course, at my far farewell game, he has to come showing up in a in a Tottenham shirt. So um, I know that he took it well. Uh, his family took it well. So you know, it's all all for the love of the game, um, and you know, the rivalry because it, it's a very real thing. The attention it gets from the fans is a lot different than rivalries that I'm used to in MLS. So um, obviously uh, that, that was good. Bit, yeah, that was, that was good fun. And uh, uh, you know, now I, that's just all talk. You know, I want I want my play on the field to to do the talking. Stylistically, how have you found it adapting to Arsenal's playing out from the back? It's a little bit different from what you've been used to playing with. Them. Absolutely, very different. But I feel like I've adapted quite well, to be fair. Um, the best part of it, about it right now is the fact that. When I'm on the pitch, everybody wants the ball, so it makes things a little bit easier for me. If I can, you know, identify a pass or something like that, uh, typically I can I can make it happen. I'd say the biggest change is the start positions are a lot higher. Um, they want me closer to my center backs to keep the ball moving faster and, and uh, keep it circulating. So uh, just adjusting those small details, uh, it's a little more running for me, which is a good thing, you know, keep me in shape. But uh, overall. Um, it's a process, you know, step by step, but I was really pleased with how it came off tonight. Uh, your, your family moved over to England? Yeah, my wife's over there. We had our son in England, okay. uh, in oh, London. So he'll be, yeah, he'll be a little English, yeah. he will be calling my, my wife mum, yeah, that's for sure. Who's he rooting for in November? Uh, yeah, yeah. He's got no choice for that one. Uh, yeah, you know, but that's great to be able to... sorted. Yeah, house sorted, living arrangement sorted, but again, that's all from the club. You know, being able to take care of me and her and understanding my situation with the timing of having a kid and, and really just taking a huge stress relief off of me, uh, helping sort things out. And I can't, uh, 
you know, stress enough how grateful I am to Arsenal for for how they handled me and and especially my wife and my son. How big how big is the step up from MLS to Premier League? Is it a big step? Big step for sure. And every step I've gone through in my career has been a big step. You know, going from high school to uni here in the states, then uni to MLS, another big step. MLS to national team, and now MLS to Premier League as well. Um, you know, the the players I'm with every single day, they're uh, very very talented players. They bring a consistency an intensity and, and a different sort of intelligence with the way that they play the game. So, um, and I'd say the other big thing is, is the standards that they hold you to on the pitch every single day as well, uh, from the coaching staff uh, amongst the players. Um, and that's all, you know, I, th I feel like sometimes the training regimen can be a little more casual in the United States, in some places, not everywhere, but just a few places. Um, but maybe what I was used to at the Revolution was a little more casual. So um, that sort of been a little bit of a turning, uh, a little bit of an adjustment, um, but I've adjusted well. And I love, I love football and I love being around the game. And I feel like I was eager for a new challenge, and, and this is definitely one of those. You don't call it soccer. No, it I'm does. doing my best to respect the culture, you know. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Speaking of the World Cup, have you and Aaron talked about the possibility not yet. of facing off not the day after Thanksgiving? That would be that would be really special, I think, for not only for the club but for for both of us to be able to to play against each other in the World Cup would, would be insane. Cool, cool. cool. Right. Thanks, Matt. Awesome. Yeah, thank you guys. Nice.